Hi, I'm Dennis, I'm German and I'd like to apologize for that. If there's one thing I could say about video games it is, I love point and click adventures. I've been playing them since elementary school and <laughs> I definitely lost count on how many I played ages ago. So now I want to show you my top 12 point and click adventures. I'll do this in English, don't know why. So please note that this is my personal top 12, don't you bother me with <laughs> you forgot to mention Final Fantasy! Or something like that. And um, if my English is kind of crappy, I apologize for being German. So don't you blame me for stuff I already apologize for, right? Great. So here's my top 12 point and click adventures of all time. Number 12. Full Throttle. What I love most about this game is the atmosphere and the cinematography. Actually, I think you could indeed call it cinematography. It feels like watching some fierce and brutal action road movie from the 70s. So it is really much fun to play, but there are two big issues with this one. First one, it is too short. I once made a time run and finished it in about 20 minutes. Second one, there's only a few puzzles and most of them are very action driven. Which is a cool idea and leads to some very clever puzzles such as the demolition derby. But on the whole, it does not really feel like playing a point and click adventure. So it's just rank 12 for full throttle. Number 11 Black Mirror. Ever since Broken Sword was such a success, there were many games ripping off the original. Black Mirror, however, totally feels like the first Broken Sword, without even trying to copy anything from the original. It has a very intense story with some clever twists. The puzzles are always very original in logic and the main character is not only some shining hero as usual. Oh, by all means he's not. The game succeeds in creating a creepy kind of atmosphere without using too much gore effects or horror elements. All the locations just make you assume that there's something evil going on and it gets more and more intensive the longer you play. If you like Broken Sword but haven't tried Black Mirror yet, you definitely should. Number 10. Quest for Glory Shadows of Darkness. <laughs> Just seeing this title screen gives me the chills, because I know what's in this game. Unlike the first three Quest for Glory games, this one is less funny, but more creepy and dark and totally evil. It is a successful mix between Eastern RPG and point and click adventure, but in my opinion there are enough puzzles to make it worth being mentioned in my top 12. What I love is the fact that the story of the game is quite straightforward, however the game itself is anything but linear. As an adventure it may be a little dull, but the story, the characters and this dark evil atmosphere make it absolutely enjoyable. Even though sometimes you're just standing in the woods throwing stones to improve your skills. Yeah. Number 9. Grim Fandango. This game would have ranked much higher if it had better controls. Well, it came out by the time when 3D graphics were state of the art. However, in this case LucasArts failed in bringing 3D and keyboard control to point and click adventures. The gameplay was really bad and from a today's point of view the characters look like shitty cubes with ugly skins, though these skeletons shouldn't have any skin at all. That really is a pity, because Grim Fandango offers an epic story, funny puzzles, a great main character as well as charismatic villains, and interesting locations. I bet if they made it in the style of Monkey Island 3, it would totally have kicked major ass. It remains a great game, which could have been much more in my opinion. Number 8. Loom. I know there are many people who hate this game, however I love it. I only played the EGA version of this game and I think it offers one of the best graphics in video game history. It creates a unique look which is simply beautiful. Tchaikovsky's one leg was perfectly transported to adlib music. But what I like most is the innovative concept of using music for the controls. This offers a lot of possibilities. Unfortunately Loom does not use all of them quite properly. I love the game for the style it shows and the atmosphere it creates. However, it is a little short and in my opinion they could have made a lot more with the concept. So Loom stays on number 8. 
and remains an absolute cult classic. Number 7. Monkey Island 2 LeChuck's Revenge Okay, could there be any list of great adventure games without at least one part of the Monkey Island franchise? I guess not. I know that the first Monkey Island is the real classic. However, I think the second one is better. It has better puzzles, more locations and I even think the better humor. No doubt that the ending is dull, but who cares as long as the rest of the game is fun to play. And it is. Don't get me wrong, the first one's great too, but I just assume that LucasArts improved a lot with uh, LeChuck's Revenge. I even like the special edition of this one, while Secret of Monkey Island SE was... <sighs> Let's not talk about it. Number 6. Broken Sword This game brought the whole genre to a whole new level. It had beautiful hand-drawn location sets, smooth animations, very easy controls, great voice actors, an orchestrated soundtrack. This game just had everything a good adventure needs nowadays. It was focused more on the story and the characters rather than on puzzles. And it worked out. There are still enough tricky moments where you have to prove your adventurous skills. But the main focus is on the hunting of a murderer and the search for the old cult of the Templars. To me, the first Broken Sword is the only really great one in the series. Broken Sword 2 was nice too, but far away from the first one. The third and the fourth part looked really neat, but just couldn't fascinate me the way the first part did. So Broken Sword ranks, as the only part from the franchise, on rank 6. Number 5. Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. This was, I guess, the first point and click adventure that I ever played, and still I consider it one of the best. It has a story absolutely worthy to the movie trilogy, unlike... Yeah... The idea to bring in Plato's Lost Dialogue as a collection of information about how to get to Atlantis totally reminds me of Henry Jones' diary from Last Crusade, which is my favorite part of the series. The three stones which are necessary to find the two outposts and to open the gates to Atlantis are some fine idea too. The whole game feels like Indiana Jones. You can even use the whip at so many places. So we have a good story, good puzzles, good locations, good dialogue, good characters and to me that makes one absolutely fine adventure which every fan of the genre should have played rather than watching. Yeah! Number 4. Sam and Max Hit the Road this game is totally annoying, in a positive way. It seems to play in the USA of our world, but somehow it's just so wrong. It's colorful, it's funny, it's stupid, it's anarchic. And what I love most is that Sam and Max simply don't seem to care about how weird everything around them gets. This weirdness gives a lot of room for funny and challenging puzzles. But as weird as it is, after all it is still some firm and fine detective story. The game is so full of good jokes, funny catchphrases and one-liners. I was quite young at the time I played this the first time. I think I didn't get the overall context of the story. I didn't really accept that this game can't be taken serious at all. However, it had big influence on my humor. Nowadays, I still use some of the game's phrases in my everyday life. To me, Sound Max Hit the Road is unforgettable, and I was absolutely amazed when I saw that Telltale's actually doing a good job with the new series of games. However, this one's a classic, and I think also the most original, so the LucasArts version ranks fourth. Number 3 Day of the Tentacle. This one is somehow similar to Sound Max, but I think it's a little bit better. Here's a short summary of the story just to show you how crazy it is. A mad scientist invents two creatures called tentacles which he keeps as pets. One's evil, the other's not. The evil tentacle drinks from an obviously useless mud machine so it grows arms. After that it wants to conquer the world, yeah. As a consequence the scientist sends three students through time in three portaloos in order to deactivate the mud machine in the past. How can you not love it? Just like Seven Max, this game is colorful and weird. Every character seems to be totally dull and crazy, including the protagonists. The fact that the game takes place at three different time levels gives a lot of room for innovative puzzles, and the game makes so much use of it. 
Plus, it has a great kind of over-the-top humor, but in a very friendly way. The characters are not cynical or brutal, they are just so very goofy. So this may not be my favorite point-and-click adventure, but I consider it the funniest video game ever made. So, rank 3 for Day of the Tentacle. Um, speaking of 3... Number 2. The Curse of Monkey Island. Yes, I know some people criticize the third part a lot. I don't understand why. It is my personal favorite of the Monkey Island series. Don't get me wrong, I really like the first part, I just don't think it's such a uber adventure. It looks nice, it is funny, the puzzles are okay and it's just fun to play. It has a lot of good ideas such as the insult sword fighting, although this is the part I nearly hate most of the game because it's getting so boring at some point. It's a neat game, but to me it's not the best. However, it's not my least favorite Monkey Island. Escape from Monkey Island is the shit. Curse of Monkey Island has nice comic graphics, a lot of fun, enjoyable characters and great music. Plus, I love this dark but somewhat comfy atmosphere on Blood Island. I enjoyed this third part a lot. And for the few things it may not do perfectly, it is still a great adventure regarding the puzzles, the hint level and the difficulty on the game. Yo! <laughs> I just noticed that I already had 8 LucasArts titles in my top 12 list. It's a bit one-sided, ain't it? So, here's my number one and guess what? It's not from LucasArts. Toonstruck! I loved this game from the first second on. It is just like playing some Looney Tunes cartoon, which I loved so much as a kid. It makes fun of all the cartoon cliches and, at least in the first half of the game, there is absolutely no location where nothing completely weird is going on. There are also many memorable scenes from this game, such as the part where the butler, who is a foot, is lured into a trapdoor. Or the part where a cat and a dog try the choke articles on each other. I could watch this over and over again. Plus, it has a lot of well-thought puzzles, which totally fit in this bright and cheery cartoon universe. Unfortunately, this game totally bombed. It took many years and a shitload of money to create that game. When it was finished, it was a total failure. A sequel never came out. I don't know why. I think this game is really genius and brilliant in many ways. The only thing that I don't like at this game is that Christopher Lloyd seems a little bit lost. He's a great actor, but whenever I see a video sequence, I rather get the feeling that the studio picked some random guy from the street and put him into a blue box. I don't get the feeling that he's actually walking through this cartoon world. It's a pity. I think Lloyd's a great actor, especially in such goofy roles as Doc Brown from Back to the Future. So I think it should not have been such a problem for him to play Drew Blank. Anyways, I love Toonstruck. I enjoyed every minute playing it. And if you haven't tried it yet, you definitely should. So, this is my top 12 of point and click adventures. I hope you enjoyed it and agree with me at least for some parts of the list and um... Oh, <laughs> sorry my time's up, see ya.